Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Shadow Tutorial. Today we're taking a look at a nice dissolve effect, as you can see right here on the screen, and this one is controlled by a script, which means that you can call this at pretty much any time you want in your game. So just uh, pressing my button again, you're going to see it um, dissolving the land again and again. So we're going to be taking a look at how to do this today. It is quite a simple process actually, and we're going to be seeing a new function that we haven't seen before. Um, inside of the HLSL language, or sorry, CG, CG language. So as always with this video, I tend to just get rid of everything I have right now, throw this away, and we're going to start over again. So let's start by creating a new dissolve folder, which I have right there, and then I will go ahead and create a new material. Let's call this one dissolve, and I'm going to put it on top of this thing, my kind of little island that I've been playing around with for a long time now. Um, and on this thing, I'll also create another material, so, sorry, not a material, a shader. So shader, only shader. It's been a very long time since I haven't made a video, so I'm messing up a little bit, but don't worry about that. It is easy to pick up again. Okay, so first thing, we have our shader right here. As always, we're going to go to the very top and change the name of it. Let's put that in the N3K folder and then just call it Dissolve. In terms of property, we're going to need a few things in here. We're going to need the main texture, as always the dissolve texture and this one is quite funny but you'll see what it does a little bit later on um, it actually gives a shape to your kind of uh, dissolve so this is a dissolve texture and then this is going to be 2d because it's a texture default on white just like the um, just like the main texture always the same exact thing and then we'll go with another property called dissolve y this is going to be some kind of um, when we do when we do lerps we use a transition flow. The dissolve Y is going to be what keeps track of the current point in the world uh, we're currently dissolving. So current Y of the dissolve effect. And this is a float. We're going to say by default it's going to be equal to zero because we haven't started yet. And then we're also going to have something else here, dissolve size, which is going to be um, the height, or, or sorry, not the height, but the length of the dissolve. So size of the effect is what I wrote here. It's going to be a float, and by default, I'm going to put it on, say, 2. That's 2 meter, by the way. Okay, and I'm also going to have another, another um, property that I call starting Y to know exactly where we can start our effect. Because in my, in my actual um, map right here, now the starting Y property is going to be used, so in case I have objects that go beyond, not beyond, sorry, but beneath 0, uh, we can also start dissolving them a little bit earlier. So if you have a look right here, I have my player. If I bump his Y to 0, that would be fine. Like, he would start this... Uh, actually, that wouldn't be fine because the uh, pivot point is the center. But just assume that he's like that. So he is literally just standing on top of the grid. What would happen is we'd get a perfect dissolve starting at frame 1, and then it would go up. But now, if we have objects that go beneath that, just like my piece of land right here, the dissolve effect would start right here, and that would that would kind of be like not good looking. So the starting Y is going to like give us a point in the world. Say we say minus ten, like we did in the default, it's going to start at approximately here. So the effect is going to start right there and then go up. So that's what my starting Y is for. Enough um, enough talking about this. Let's go back and code this thing. So starting Y is the starting point of the effect. It's going to be float. And like I mentioned, I'm going to default that on minus 10, which is like a safe zone, I guess. Not a lot of my scene go beyond, or sorry, beneath minus 10, because that's, you know, that's minus 10 meters. <laughs> okay, if we go down a little bit, um, in terms of render type, we're going to keep that on opaque. That's fine. And now for the pass, it is a fairly simple shader. We only need one pass. There is only like one function that's going to make everything happen, basically. So let's just keep it that way. CG Prime is fine. This is fine. I don't like playing around with Fog. <laughs> you must know that by now. Uh, we're including Unity CG, CG Inc., of course. App Data. We want to keep the Vertex position. That's fine. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, we want to keep the UV, just for drawing our texture. I am not going to keep the fog in V2F, we're going to keep this, that's fine. Uh, vertex position, also very important in our case, but we're going to keep another position, a float 3, weld position. And since this one isn't really given to us by semantic, we're going to put it under text chord 
one. So we're going to overwrite text coordinate one just to put our data in it. Um, we're not using text coordinate one. Okay, so if we go down a little bit, we have a bunch of, you know, we have a bunch of property that we declare on top. Let's keep these two because that's for drawing our texture. But we also have more. We have the sampler 2D, the dissolve texture. And what I like doing here when I'm not sure, I just grab all of this, copy it, paste it, and then I'll remove it afterward. So we have like the sample 2D dissolve texture, that's fine. Now we need the dissolve Y, so float dissolve Y. And right after that, we got the float dissolve size. And finally, the float starting. Why? We're going to be using all of these in that single pass. That's why I declare, well, basically that's why I declared them all here. Okay. Now to the vertex shader. The vertex shader is going to be the same exact thing as we always do, but we have one thing to calculate first. We have to calculate the world position. This is what I've put right here. So to do this, we're going to be using the same exact matrix as we always do. We we'll say, oh, well, pos, which is what we declare up top, is equal to multiply. We multiply by unity object to world, just like this. And we take in the v.vertex xyz. Oh, sorry. This has to be outside, actually. And just like this, we now have our world position. What I'm also going to be doing is get rid of the fog. All right. So fix for frag. This is for drawing the actual pixel on top. Let's get rid of the fog and this is where the magic happens. So the function I was mentioning earlier is a simple function called clip. Now clip, what it's going to do basically is um, clip takes in a number right here, so a decimal number, say a float. And if that number is beneath zero, it's not going to render the pixel on the screen. So that means if we put that on say minus one, just like this, and we say, and then hit save, we go back in here. Oh, we do have an, a little error here. Forgot my semicolon. Okay, so we go back in here, and then we apply the shader to this object. So I drag and drop my dissolve shader on this. Technically, I should not be able to see anything. Now for some reason, my, oh, I forgot to put my dissolve shader on uh, N3K, dissolve. Here it is. So technically, just like this, uh, we don't actually see any color on this. And that's not because it doesn't have a texture. We can put a texture on it. That's fine. Same texture as always. The problem here is that since we have minus one in here, nothing is being rendered. If we put that on zero, then everything is rendered. So as long as it's above or, uh, above or equal to zero, then it's going to render the pixel. So this function gives us a really nice way to just play with um, what we see on the screen. So uh, let's just make a quick example like this. Let's use a random, random example. We're going to take the vertex position in the screen. So say i.vertex dot, we could do x. So i.vertex.x is equal to basically, um, your, the pixel is going to be say, we're on that pixel right here that I'm pointing at right now with my cursor. That pixel right now is on zero, and if we go right there, then it's half of the screen in pixels. I don't know how big this is. This would be, say, a 800 pixel. So right here would be the 400 pixel line. Now what I'm going to do right here is just say uh, modulo 10. See what happens. Mm, nothing, actually. Oh, sorry. One minus all of this. There we go. And as you can tell, we just got bunch of pixel that we could see on the screen. Now, I don't know if it's clear, as clear to you as it is to me because of the video compression. Let me just bump that down a little bit. Maybe five. There, that's that's much clearer. So as you can tell, it's just cutting the pixels so we don't see them anymore. Now, we're going to be using that same exact uh, function to basically emulate a dissolve effect. So let's go right back at this and let's start creating a, um, an actual formula, an actual algorithm that would use our world position. So I'll, I'll go to the very top right here, I'll say float um, transition is equal to, and then take the current dissolve y, oh sorry, dissolve y, and do minus i dot world position dot y. Now in my clip function, and it uh, doesn't matter which, which order this is, I'm gonna go ahead and just start with my starting y, 
and then that's gonna be the starting point of our equation. So that's starting y, we're gonna say it's plus, and then we'll use our transition float, and we'll go ahead and multiply this by the UV of the um, dissolved texture. So let's do text 2D, dissolve texture, and then take the UV of that dissolved texture, and then we'll say times dissolve size. Do I have enough parentheses? I think I messed up my function. Let's go have a look. So undeclared transition, it's right here. Oh, typo, my bad. So if we have a look at this now, we still have an error we're missing, or we have um, something more. Let's go ahead and remove this. And here we go. So our effect right here is a little bit hard to see. I'm actually glitched right now for a second. There we go. We have our dissolve right here. And we have the starting point. So the starting point of the effect is minus 10. If we play around with the starting point, as you can tell, it goes up and down. Now if we play with the size of the effect, you're going to see that we have more, a lot more leverage on this thing. So it's a lot bigger. Let's keep a smaller effect, say 5 meters. And I'm just going to be putting that back on default value, so minus 10. Now what we have to do at this point is play along with the current Y of the dissolve effect. So that's the dissolve Y in the code. This way it can go up to here and just basically complete the whole thing. Slowly but surely. So we have to do this via code, of course we don't want to be dragging our slider manually while the game plays because that's not going to work out when you have some end users. So to do this, we're going to be controlling it via a script. So let's go ahead, right click on dissolve, I'm going to create a new C sharp script, call it the dissolve effect trigger or something like that, doesn't really matter what name you give it, and we're going to jump right into it. So it is a fairly simple um, set float as you've seen before when we did this kind of uh, script before. We'll need the material, so that's dissolve material. We'll need a public float speed and also I'll put a max so it doesn't keep incrementing all the time. And then finally those two float right here, they don't need to be public, they can be private. So current y and start time. What I'll do right here, create a update. And in my update, so um, let's do if this is during the animation, so if current y is bigger should it be bigger or smaller? If it's bigger than max, actually if it's smaller than max, then it means we are currently playing the animation, so dissolve material, set float, and then we gotta set the float. So send a string, the value is gonna be current y. So what is the actual string we send in? It is the, it's either a uh, int for name ID, which I'm not quite sure what it is, or a string for name. Now the name of the actual parameter we want to change is at the very top right here, it's a property actually. We want to change dissolve y. So let's go ahead, paste it in here, and then we can say current y plus equal time dot delta time times speed. And just like this, we manage to create our effect. Now um, I'm going to be able to control this, actually I want to be able to control this with a public function. Uh, it could be public, could be private, really doesn't matter if you want to trigger it from somewhere else and of course you want to make it public so another object in the scene can access it. But in my case, I'm going to be putting everything in into a single script. So I'll just go down here, type a quick input get key down. So if I press on E, so key code E, I'll do a trigger effect. That is a function I currently don't have, so let's go ahead and generate it. Here it is. And it's going to be simple, simple thing. So start time is equal to time dot time, and we'll put the current y back on zero. Now, when I start the game, it should actually trigger the animation, and when I press on E, it should trigger it again. Of course, we need to put our script somewhere in the scene, so I'll just put it on the object itself. I'm on the debug platform, which is my piece of plan right here. I'll put my dissolve effect trigger, and then uh, let's actually set the parameters. So we need to put the material. Here it is. The speed we can go with 1 meter a second, and the maximum, something crazy like 500 or 5,000. 5, 
And if we hit play now, we actually fall with all the other guys. Let's put our <laughs> let's put our guy back in the center. There it is. And as you can tell, our effect plays at one meter a second. And if we press E, it's just going to start over again. Now you could actually configure it so when you press E, it can go the other way around. You can play around with this effect as much as you want, really. And also, just a quick note before we end this, let's have a look at the dissolve texture because this one is actually going to affect the way, um, well, your dissolve looks. So if I actually change this for, say, this one, as you can tell, it plays with the dissolve uh, effect, it plays with the actual UV of this texture, and we get a, a whole different effect, actually. Let's see if we have another one. Is that going to work? That, that looks weird, actually. But as you can tell, we get a whole new different effect for every single texture you have. And that is actually where we're going to be ending today's episode. It was a short one. Uh, we're making short videos nowadays because we're working on much bigger projects that are going to come out quite soon, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, again, like I said, bunch of new things are coming really really soon just stay a little bit more patient we have the subway surfer launching fairly soon and other than that guys i will catch you on discord i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i'll catch you later